Foundation. It's a workshop, uh, which essentially means that um, we're going to talk and exchange about marketing and on marketing strategy. Um, well, what else? My name is John Schultz, for the ones who don't know me, and uh, oh, here's a uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't second what Charles is doing when, when the tournament is over. <laughs> and, uh, uh, all I'm saying here uh, is that uh, I've been, so I've been working uh, on, for Google Office Marketing and uh, quite some time now. And uh, I'm currently handling the social media action, it's most of them, a uh, great deal of them, let's say, uh, for a legal office on a daily basis. But in fact, in fact, this is not really about me because this is the workshop, so um, I was thinking about doing some introduction, however, I also noticed that we sort of know almost everyone to each other, so and we're quite a lot of them, so I suggest that we may skip the part because otherwise, well, I don't know. It's a lot. Uh, do you need introductions? <laughs> That's what I thought. So you, uh, you are nine different person at the same time? No, not me. It's introductions, not introductions. Oh, okay, okay. Um, anyway, so the the uh, lecture maker, perhaps, to enter in the workshop itself. One quick, quick, quick uh, briefing about uh, this past year's achievements. Um, I probably did forget some of them, uh, but so feel free to, to add to it. So uh, at least to me, but that's obviously my own personal of my own here. Uh, we got a new website. Uh, the reception, let's say. Uh, was pretty good. In fact, it was really good in terms of uh, feeling and aesthetics. Uh, we're currently, or the native language teams are currently migrating uh, to this new website. There are some issues uh, that are being addressed at the moment with respect to specific uh, elements. Um, obviously, the website is, especially these days, a living environment, a living framework, so it needs uh, content refresh. Regular um, with respect to social media, um, one, well, let's say the most striking uh, pattern this year that hadn't really started before, but this was really good for this year, is uh, the growth of our uh, spread of our uh, social media action. Uh, basically, I'm going to start with the social, social networks themselves. So we have a Facebook page which is growing uh, in uh, audience. We have, and that's quite interesting, uh, a LibreOffice Google Plus community, which is also uh, growing, but with the difference that uh, the Google Plus community is really starting to have, uh, so to speak, a life of its own. People are posting on it, people are discussing it, uh, uh, they're talking about LibreOffice. Sometimes it's user support, sometimes it's questions about LibreOffice, and sometimes it's general discussions surrounding uh, problems. Facebook uh, itself is much more passive, which is also a very interesting thing. It's, it has really, it's not so much a social network uh, for us. We just post stuff there, content, at least that's, that's what happens. And then there are hundreds of people who like, they're pressing the like button, that's what they do there. It makes them happy, but it allows them and it allows them to be happy, it allows us to uh, spread our message. Reddit, uh, Reddit is growing. We have a LibreOffice uh, Reddit uh, page, Reddit uh, channel. Um, it's growing. It used to be there for quite some time, uh, but it was extremely discreet. Uh, we're happy to mention that it's getting a little bit better. Um, then we have what we did. Uh, and in fact, it was actually a, a quite a bit connected effort here. Um, we opened the LibreOffice Twitter account. Now, this might be uh, a surprise because you might think, well, didn't you know better than actually having and opening 
the Twitter account for Libra was before. We had it, but at the very beginning, uh, for various reasons that seemed to be really cool and making sense at that time, we had decided uh, that we would only be tweeting from our document foundation account. So uh, you can go to tf.org right now, which is uh, the document foundation uh, account, and you will see that we do effectively tweet, but we have uh, tried to separate a little bit the kind of content and the kind of communication we're doing. So the admin office uh, Twitter account is not the same these days, uh, that, so which you can see the tf.org uh, TDF work is now mostly used for official announcements, especially, basically, the document foundation is all thing. So that's, that's the idea behind TDF work. LibreOffice tweets every day, several times, uh, sometimes except Sundays, but it kind of depends. At least you get some more tweets. Um, basically, it talks about LibreOffice features, it talks about uh, tips on how to use LibreOffice, it talks about general news surrounding LibreOffice, fun facts, exchanges, discussions on Twitter, etc. Uh, etc. Et As a result, we went from zero, I think it was in January, to yeah, several thousands of followers uh, on Twitter's day. And that's a pretty that's pretty good uh, considering that we have not hired uh, any president is a PR for this, so you know, uh, we have to thank the team uh, behind that. Uh, other accomplishments, uh, we now have a better coordination of our press releases um, and the coordination of the releases themselves, the software releases themselves, which means we have a better, we work better as a community. Um, with respect to the native language teams, uh, the APR author, and uh, journeys through the community and the coordination. Uh, we're not exactly there yet, but we have significantly improved. Um, improved yes, yeah. the latest two announcements, we have distributed them, uh, I think, in uh, 15 uh, different language versions. Of course, every version goes to the relevant journalists, but we have more, unfortunately, we have more local mailing list than translations. For instance, we have a mailing list for all the Nordics, and we have been able only to distribute the Finnish version. Not the Swedish, not the Norwegian, and the Danish, of course, because life is providing the Danish, but out of four, of four countries, we have been able only to distribute two press releases in the native language. Of course, uh, English in Sweden is perfectly acceptable, but if you receive that in Swedish, it's even better. Which leads us to existing challenges and issues. So, what I have listed there is entirely personal, uh, and actually it's not the purpose of this workshop to have me doing all the talking, it's also new people in the room. So, uh, very quickly, just what Italo said, or really hinted at, the marketing team is actually very small. Uh, and we need to grow this marketing team. Um, we need more content production. Um, that's a general remark. Um, someone, I think it was William, came this year and with the project of having, you know, he started to produce a weekly newsletter. Uh, the form was not overly optimal, but it is a large undertaking, and this should not be up to one individual or one volunteer to do that for you. It cannot be. Uh, the whole point of the newsletter is not exactly that we expect people outside the New Office project to read it, but it's that anything from a newsletter to a Elixir style uh, news platform would be used for the general project to know about what's going on in various and various other parts of the New York project. We feel that's very important and we feel precisely there's a lack of information and therefore a lack of inbound marketing uh, in, the, in, the, in the project and we need to address this. Uh, so yes, that we need online tools to keep everyone informed. Um, on a more traditional level, 
uh, we still suffer from a lack of brand awareness. Now, it's been several years, I'm saying this, it's been several years, of telling you it's saying just about the same. It is all right. In fact, brand awareness is not a given. It is never a given uh, unless you have become such a hallmark of, you know, let's say, your own industry that for quite some time your brand name will be recognized everywhere. Um, today, LibreOffice uh, is doing well as a brand, but we still face um, lots of people who have not heard about LibreOffice. Um, basically, I've never heard about it. They probably have heard about OpenOffice, but generally, there are less people who have heard about LibreOffice. Uh, there are strong, some strong suggestions that this is, this can be perceived in the tailor we both done uh, by geographies. Basically, we're doing better in Europe, for instance. Uh, we're doing quite well in Japan, but in the US, for instance, we're not doing well at all. We're doing very well in Brazil. We're doing well. But in Brazil, we're, we're, we're better than their soccer teams. <coughs> when, when you look at the fact that the marketing team is very small, yeah. um, uh, you can you can approach it in various ways. One is, uh, for example, Brazil. Uh, there was some reasoning why why the people stepped in uh, from the psychological point of view approach. You, you may say, well, maybe uh, people first need uh, to have some problem mm -hmm. to experience some personal problem. Uh, Developers, open source developers, they step in the problem when they, when they step in some code. When they find it a problem for them, then that's a motivation. So when people find there is some problem, something that they want to address, and if, if there is an, uh, an opportunity, a way that, that the work that people can do in small steps, that becomes a sort of a child of them. That they feel really, oh, that's something that I am doing, that I'm responsible for. Though it, it might be little and, and might need some more love to grow. But if you find approaches like that, if you can uh, uh, think of ways to make that a seed in, in the community, I think that that could be an opportunity to help people stepping in and once they did. Did a little thing that they feel okay. Uh, I might stay here and put some more energy in later on. Are you suggesting that we do some sort of easy hacks for marketing and then ensuring that we're meant where we're following up uh, with the people? Or, uh, uh, when, when you do easy hacks that that uh, that. that is that you start with mentioning easy hacks. Uh, imagine that you say we uh, we need a sticker or a file or, or a cap or whatever, uh, and you want to get people involved. Maybe it's a good opportunity to to do a price draw. I don't know, you mentioned that in the, in the holiday, and that you uh, just get get some random ideas from over the world. Um, uh, let's say okay. five and maybe three are great and maybe you can then say okay what well, why not a different approach for uh, for Australia than for Canada or whatever and that, that you and, and and not by and, and then uh, more encouraging people than trying to centralize the process. Because when you say, oh, there's something, and oh, oh, it's your trial, it's your process, then people will tend to be more caring than when some okay. other people take it over. Okay. But uh, it's it just some general yeah. thoughts, and then. Uh, okay. and, and it's complicated because how do you trigger people to, exactly. to step in? I, I, exactly. I mean, it's, it's really a matter of engaging people. You know, it's a matter of engaging people. Make, making people feel. I hope that they have the opportunity to get engaged. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's it's hard. It's um, let me tell you 
uh, one of my experiences uh, in the late stage of 2013. Somewhere around, I think it was October, uh, we, we slash I uh, decided to uh, try to audit whether there was any real breaking point with our existing website. I mean, the one that was before. So, um, you know, we created forms uh, for people and we asked them questions about the website. And what was really interesting, and I do not pretend for the moment that the poll, the survey itself, was scientific by any means. Um, but you know, at least there was a survey and certainly uh, people were invited to chime in and say, you know, you should ask this now. What was really interesting is that it was maybe not a geography, but certainly a medium, a, a differentiation by medium. Basically, you would turn to the English-speaking user list, and the feedback was bad. But the feedback wasn't bad necessarily on the website. What was really interesting was that that list said, you don't need to do a survey for the website, because any survey is actually biased. Okay. So we submitted at the same time the same survey project to the Facebook page and the Google Plus page. And the answer was, oh yeah, 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 sure, we would love to answer uh, uh, your survey. Where is it? And, and uh, have you thought about this? And so it was, it, you know, I still do it. I'm not sure what to do with that. So, so because the difference was so striking that it, it's surely that it must mean something. Well, it could mean when we work in a community, in an open community, there are all types of people with different uh, objectives, with different habits, or whatever. It might have just been that, that one or two of the websites stepped in with a, with a strong opinion on surveys mm -hmm. and set the tone of the whole discussion. Yeah. And when someone else would have been uh, there in the wake and well, sort of mangled or tackled yeah. that thread and said, oh, that's great, let's park it, or we meet next week and let's discuss it. But now, yeah. Yeah, maybe it, it would have been possible to cut that. Maybe not. But it no, was not the objective to cut anything, it was still the objective. No, the, the objective was to get serious feedback. Exactly. And when, uh, when the discussion goes about the usefulness or not of a public survey, you don't get serious feedback on your website. Exactly. So, but that's one of the difficulties in, in the, of course, the now community. Yeah. And, well, with all the piles of stuff that we need to handle and the different subjects we have to look at, it's not possible to yeah. manage all, but... Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, so, on these existing challenges and issues, as you know, as you noticed, uh, there's one more thing. Uh, I've noted uh, a more budget for traditional ads. Uh, this morning I mentioned uh, the fact that for some reason an ad had been run uh, in site uh, newspaper, paper edition, and that the results on our download rate had been exactly zero. Which is really, really bizarre. Uh, we had had a surge in uh, pages and visits on about us pages uh, or, or pages about the document foundation, but not on the download. At least it did not show any sort of increase. Can, 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 can you tell a bit of details about the, the ad had it created tag? How do you I, I, I do not know because it was purely a German. You know, okay. it's a German thing. So if, if they anything, offered us the page, they offered me. us, but I have not really, you know, the ad was okay. totally simple. I do not have it on No. Um, okay. No, it was, it was done in, a, in, in, let's say, in a couple of days by the German community because it was kind of last minute offers oh, yes. that we that we got. Of course, okay. if a mega, if a daily offers you an alpha page, you you get it anyway for free. You get it anyway. But we were expected. So the, probably Florian would be more able to answer that, and uh, we can maybe ask him. Yeah. Tomorrow. Well, the ad, of course, was about LibreOffice, so we discussed that in English 
but we didn't see the German output. And so, so the end, the end it was written WWW. Yeah, of course, it's, uh, it was LibreOffice is a free office product. It, it, you can, uh, uh, it's, it's a productivity, it's advanced. So the typical messages were the, the, the usual ones. Uh, it was uh, in a, there was I think also a graphic working on that. So it, it was not just text, there were images. And of course at the end there was uh, downloading, it, there was a, the usual downloading at LibreOffice.org. But you know, the most important thing in the advertising is repetition. Yeah. Uh, so, where's your budget? No, exactly. No, of course, but you know, at least to see a 10% increase in download from Germany is something that from you what may... Sorry, 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 wait. Georg, you would like to say something? Maybe one day, just one day. Sorry, Georg. Um, so, so if I did it correctly, you say you saw a rise in traffic, but not in downloads. Yes, exactly. Um, in my personal um, view, that would mean that this was the first contact for quite a few people, yeah. because messaging theory typically says you need to see something multiple times before you make a decision on it, which to me means you just uh, whatever bump you had in there is the number of first contacts with LibreOffice. Mm -hmm. But not all of them will immediately download. Sure, you know, it needs a constant repetition and being added. Um, but actually, um, it sounds to me, because someone who knows people wouldn't necessarily go to the website because they've already been there. Yeah. Um, they know what's on the website. So I think there's a good chance that actually you gave people their first contact point. If you give them two to three, perhaps four more, um, you might find a conversion to downloads. I mean, maybe not to the same channel, but anyway, yeah. the same person or see somewhere else, they're more likely to no, be def Definitely, yes, but this also shows how the impact of advertising has decreased over the, the, the last yeah. few years. Because Firefox ran an ad in the New York Times and then ran it for how many days? One? Yeah, one edition. Yeah. One, edition. Yeah. one edition. Yeah, but that's uh, again why right. it had more context before the media. I don't know. Firefox better security than the Linux or something like that. Yeah. 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 yeah, the Firefox, by the way, was 10 years ago, so I think it. Uh, yeah, it was 10 years ago. It changed your mark. But the Firefox thing, I know I participated in it. I okay. donated some money. But that was driven by the community. Like, we all shared in the, the ads, we bought the ads. Uh, and, uh, there was just like a big fundraiser for the ad. So you mean there was already a storytelling? Right, before the ad. And, and word spread through all, all of New York that the ad was going to be in there and compete against, you know, export. So it, it was a very good, very good campaign, a lot of awareness behind the scenes. Yes. Uh, I have a little addition. Uh, I organize <coughs> events and concerts in the Netherlands. And the experience we have is that if we run with an ad, we do it approximately four or five times mm -hmm. around uh, every week, uh, approximately between two or three weeks before the event, you see the actual conversion starting to come from ads. And these are not only ads in papers, because we cannot measure conversion of that, but also conversion from ads on websites. Um, two things are important. Um, repetition, but also creating a sense of urgency. Uh, how can you create a sense of urgency in relation to an office week? I don't know. Maybe trying to combine it with a new release by that other big commercial street yeah. might be an incentive for Yeah, because there's rarely a sense of urgency in that office week. <laughs>
many more advertising than usual. It was a bigger edition. So that's, uh, they, they, we, we just trying. I think that. And it was done, and it was done last minute. Yeah. They probably had hope uh, someone that was yeah. supposed to pay the schedule at the last minute and got it for free and totally accept. But yeah, I think I think you know the storytelling with the fundraising, with everything, you know, before and yeah. around the ad. It, it yeah, that's that's and with the proper timing. Um, as I said, these are this is my personal list of the existing challenges. So this is the moment where you guys get to speak. Because honestly, we have to recognize 
that today in your office is used by millions of people. Uh, in a professional environment or in a it could be home, business, whatever, uh, university uh, context. And so, you know, we, we could really describe entire uh, case studies. Their impact would be limited. We may actually need to have some materials in case studies, but targeting a specific use cases is not exactly, you know, it's, it's not so useful. It's not useful. But basically, so we're interested in growing our universe, yes. But with a big uh, nuance, we're interested in growing our user base by growing our community. Yes? Well, why, why are you so convinced that the work done with me uh, the open office of the door communication uh, didn't work at all? After all, they had a huge brand and still have a huge brand, and there were some neat uh, campaigns that I think were, that, that, that were quite well covered. Was it? Drive your uh, test to drive your drive car, whatever, uh, 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 mainly uh, driven by our friends from. Uh, um, okay, the reason uh, we, we walked over uh, from marketing uh, in the window of the office. And, uh, I, I think that what happened. And, 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 and campaign, and, and when you have a neat campaign like that, uh, it does have an effect because. Uh, we had the, the banners translated in Dutch and people used it on the website and posted it on all and everywhere. So yeah, so 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 things like that. Yeah. So so, so, so you're alluding so you're alluding to several things here. <coughs> Giving people badges and materials and banners is definitely a good idea. That's definitely part of what we do and what we should do because we don't do it enough. That's true. Mm -hmm. Now this being said, um, I think, but I'm not sure. You must be referring to the set of why the are pages. No, 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 no. Um, actually, I think that was not exactly what happened. I think what happened was a, a series of factors. For a certain while, openoffice.org was the only game in town when you were uh, considering somebody else to decide which is fine. Um, but then there was also uh, and I must salute you, Cor and Sophie and others here in this room and outside this room. Because for over 10 years, we liaised relations with governments. We created these relations. We, we showed that migrations were possible. Um, and that ultimately drove the brand value. That's because essentially it came in at moments where there was nothing else. Yeah, but once you have, once you have and, and, and it is linked to, to a certain campaign and a feeling campaign that it's more than just a banner. So it's a combination that makes sense. So what's your what what, what is your um, what is your approach here? What what to use this that you recommend? Um, just uh, I, I don't I, I don't really remember the name at the moment of the were two campaigns. But the first one hit the lines quite well and well I, I have to look it up. And it, it just as, as an idea maybe we can sure, sure. do something along those lines. Actually, because it's it always it also is it, a nice way to get people all around the world involved easily because Translating a banner in your own language uh, isn't that, that much a hassle, and it does help. So. And you say something good? What?
more. Yeah. Enjoy the free. So, 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 the, the free messaging, of course, is complicated too, right? I mean, yeah, it's, it's, this whole thing between, exactly. you know, that, that we provide a copy for no cost, but free in the software, but, you know, no cost also means that that's what, that you can charge for that if you get it through TDF, and then there are a lot of other parts of the ecosystem where you get it, you know, for there, for you, you know, you get it, this cost a little bit, but then you get some benefits. And so, there are all these pieces of the ecosystem. In fact, we already have something like this. Because on the website, there is this, at the home page, there is this uh, carousel, this spider, and there is a free offer suite. I mean, you can really see it in the free offer suite. I'm not overly convinced it helped them, I'm not saying it did it hurt but did it absolutely help their message? Yes, we must obviously push that. But how, what is zero? Zero. What is zero something? You know, you go to Facebook and that's free. Yeah. So if we're agreed there are multiple entry points, and we should need to exploit more. Yeah. There's the currently animal entry point. I bought a postcard this morning down there, which was a burn bear. Yeah. But it was a curly little bear. Yeah. Yeah. So strap strap lever off somewhere around its collar or. Hide it somewhere so you've got to look at it and think, why am I looking at this? Leaper offers are in burn, look at it. Four channels in all this. Four channels in all this. But yeah, I mean, yeah. That's I agree with you. Really awesome. Really awesome. Yeah. No, uh, <laughs> Go ahead, Sam. Yes, yeah, so uh, that's a really good discussion. First of all, I'm enjoying it. Uh, also, I really, really like the House Leaper Office tweets. Mm -hmm. uh, personally, I think they're, um, they're really great. I don't see them for other products of any sort very often, and people do have tons of questions about LibreOffice. It's a big technical thing, and um, people are always asking me questions. I love being able to refer them to that. It's a really proactive thing, so that's fantastic. Um, yeah, there are lots of obviously very difficult things here about promoting the brand. Um, there are some things we're already doing, like. Um, uh, more times with uh, Dr. Peter Day's campaign that reaches 60 uh, groups in 30 countries. You know, the Dr. Foundation is already doing stuff with, with some of those community groups spread around. Something else, um, when I was working on an uh, infographic recently, I really had some trouble to come up with creative symbols for some of the stuff around Office Suites. Microsoft does a terrible job on this too, generally, I would say. Like, they have massive like repositories of materials and promoting Microsoft Office, but very little of it is actually visual about what the office does. The people's of the picture, it's all it's all stock photography, yeah. basically. It's all Americans with shiny teeth. Yeah. Uh, sometimes with black eyes removed and uh, whatever to fit their, <laughs> their local needs. Yeah. But um, some more visual stuff could only help. I mean, if you do an image search for LibreOffice on any search engine, you will find the icons, which are very nice, but basically nothing else. Uh, it's quite hard to paint an image of an office suite with, um, you know, I mean, so, some of the iconography is also pretty old, especially for databases. I think this is ancient symbology for databases, right? Um, so, yeah, it's expensive doing imagery, but we have a big community. Maybe uh, there's some way to have a bounty or a contest. Or, I, I don't know. So, the stuff we usually de definitely, uh, I'm, I'm actually doing something here because I'm going to connect myself. I'm going to show you, uh, show for everyone. Something we did uh, with. Um, well, while you are searching, uh, with due respect and apologies, uh, some nice female with some body paint in her office on it or whatever would be good, of course. So if you if you go with uh, if you go with um, um, to the discover section of the website. Uh, this is something I wanted to show you because we had we had quite a, we had a discussion when we did this uh, discovery section. The discovery section is essentially okay. Lily, tell me what it is, and then you have a new feature. It's it's all inside the, the discovery section, and we have uh, you know module by module, application by application, some rough. Okay, what's exciting? And indeed, what you're saying about Microsoft and how you represent a, a, an office suite is true. We don't know. I mean, what the hell? That's the only thing I can. That's the only thing I can do to get 
to, to illustrate what is the wrongness of this stage. It's complicated to do something else. So what we did was that we actually went even kind of abstract at some point. And we refused to do something, which is to put screenshots uh, of, of the software itself. So let me show you. Let's say we're going on Calc. This is Calc. Uh, for each of the modules, you have, you know, You have this, you have this kind of things. Um, I like some of them more than others. You know, uh, this is Impress, for instance. Um, this is Math. I like Math. Anyway, um, my point is this. That's not the problem. Okay, so you can feel free to say the Discover section is all there. Uh, when we released the website, the first thing was, how in the world did you not put screenshots? People need to see what they're going to get. Like, what? You're going to get a, a bar of gold when you're downloading a, an office suite? You know? And that was my first reaction. Now, eventually, we, we put the screenshots in a dedicated section so that people can see an office suite with a screenshot because it's very important, like in the Middle Age, to witness the king having dinner. And this, this is the king. That's what happened. He's having dinner. Uh, so we, we do have that, uh, but uh, you're right, and I think, you see, Ooh. ah, there you have, you have everything. It exists. <laughs> yeah, it exists. Right. I mean, the, the screenshots are important, right, because screenshots are, are an easy way for people to see that something's in vaporware, right? I mean, really, it's the first check. Like, how many, I mean, <laughs> like, you know, some of the copy is easy to write, Yeah. right? Anyone can write something. I've written all kinds of amazing things, and some people want me to believe me. But it's much harder to mock up, you know, 20 yeah. different interfaces on a couple different OSs. And this tells people that you can, you know, create things with different colors and bar charts and everything. That, you know, pictures worth a thousand words. Were, were you the guy shouting by mail to Charles that streams of were on the world I was, I was not that. You were not that. <laughs> no, but, you know, it's funny. <laughs> there, there's a funny thing. There's a funny thing. And again, it's, that's, that's based on, uh, you know, your feedback. Uh, when we did the, the I worked especially on the, on the new website design. I spent quite a lot of time, and not to get installation, but I spent quite a lot of time studying the Microsoft Office website. Because uh, you can you can hate Microsoft, you can like Microsoft, but at some point they must be doing something right. It's not just about the dominant position, <laughs> you know, it's also about something else. You can't do just crap. So I went there and my findings were interesting. I'm not suggesting the debate is not about did I like their website, did I not like their website, I don't care, it's out of the picture. But what I found there was actually very interesting. So here's what I found. No product information. I mean, seriously. You don't believe you go to the Microsoft on this website. There's no, oh, okay, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to help you be a better person. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it may, they don't need it, and we do need it, but please go on. Okay. You're going to be a better person. Um, Microsoft Office 2013 is 10 times better than everything else you have seen before. And it's, sorry, I have to tell you this joke, that, um, because that joke has been running. Yeah. 
Exactly. It's a premium product. It's like, you know, you don't need to know what it does. It's a Ferrari. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it speaks for itself. Okay. And, and, and so to answer you, Core, I mean, I'm going to just finish talking about the, the Office website uh, really quick. Uh, what I found was no screenshot. Yeah. Everything was in abstract. Um, pretty much what we tried to do, so to speak, in the discovery section. Um, the message is really uh, based on the perceived needs, like uh, be more productive um, with your business application or something like that. Um, and so, so it really got me thinking a long time about this. Now, to your objection, like they don't need it and we need it. Um, a few years ago, I started to have a conversation with someone inside um, the French government. That was six years ago, seven. And his entire beef, so to speak, for not migrating into at that time open office or was that uh, there was something that was not really, I wouldn't say implemented, it just was implemented in a different way uh, in, in the spreadsheet. Like he wanted to have something that would just be just like Excel, and we didn't have that, we did it differently. After a while, that finally got implemented just like in Excel. So I went back to him and said, so you know, this is this is here, this is it, this is stable. And then he told me, yeah, but now you know you you know we're really looking to Google Docs. So uh, Google Docs is so great. Uh, it's a pity that uh, they're you know they they refuse to you know have a self-hosting it, but you know Google Docs. Again. And I was like, you know, not to criticize. No, I, I don't use I was, no, 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 but I, I use LibreOffice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But, but no, so Jeremy, my point was this. Here's a man who tell me about a rather technical feature in, in the spreadsheet. And then a few years afterwards, when everything is ready, when he's about to do something and make a decision or influence the decisions, then he basically he tells me, oh yeah, well, the state of the art has changed. Maybe that's the fashion that's well, it is the fact that he's also looking for protection. Though. Yes, exactly. He's, he's looking to have no consequences for his decisions. And so there was fear, fear, and fear, fear is a factor. Fear. So, so in terms of marketing, yeah. the one I would look at, and I, just for, not, not for specifics about obviously, but for an understanding of branding, is look at her statements. Look at Hertz and Avis website. Okay. Because Hertz is number one, right? Yeah. And Avis's Avis's branding is around. We're not number one. We're number two. Okay. Yeah. But but we kind of try hard. That. And and so if I were you, I would take a look at Avis. I mean, this is essentially just what I've heard about. Which is the yeah, we try hard. So Avis's marketing is built around the fact that they are number two. They know they're number two. And it you know it, it's more of a comparative message. Yeah, so, and that, so it, it looks. I don't know whether that will help. Um, so, uh, I, I, I think, you know, I think, I think, I think that's uh, okay. So for the record, we do have a uh, maintain, uh, but that's on the wiki, so it's not a Yeah, but I mean, the full thing, you know, it's yeah. like it's not. It's, this is not a catchy sentence here. The full thing, like you have like feature per feature comparison, uh, yeah. which is good. But it still does not deliver a message. It's a great piece of information yeah, because the not. information you get out of it is, oh, you're not that bad. In fact, they're quite good. However, uh, I think what, what I take from this is that we may need to have what I would call a, a channel communication. That is, there should be at some point something in our message that comes perhaps as a form of material that says, okay, now for professional users, this is what we want. So, so, oh, yes. so I mean, the, the, the message, the strong message, I think that might work best against, against Microsoft Office is, I mean, essentially, Microsoft Office is, we don't have to try and we understand that, you know, yeah. we, we have everything we need. So, if you are going to position yourself against something like that, the message has to be, we respond. You, you have any issues, we fix them. Do you know what I mean? So the message has to be more about, about do we fix it? Well, 
Do, I mean, seriously, do we fix it? No, I, I, no, look at the OXML thing, look at the list yeah. of fixes, etc. Yeah. Yeah. It, it definitely does get fixed, and really rapidly. So, so maybe the marketing should be around, for us, you, you will never, because um, you don't talk about bugs, but essentially, so the, the marketing metrics has to be around support, fully support. And, um, okay. and, and, and the support is, is really the key. Yeah. So, so what's also in, in your, uh, your idea is that you basically hook all the factors you're at second. You were talking about press releases when you have a nice story and you mention Microsoft in, in the first two lines. There's a good chance that a, that a journalist will pick it up because Microsoft is mentioned. And they pick it up not because LibreOffice is great, but because etc. So when you use the fact that you are close to Microsoft and, and, and I, 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 hate, I hate talking about Microsoft in yes. the market. You don't want to do that. Because that's, you've lost the battle when you talk about being competitors. That, that's, that's when I knew they started taking LibreOffice seriously was when they started criticizing LibreOffice specifically one day. <laughs> yeah. They could have just waved their hand and yeah. said, like, there are other options. That's right, right. yeah. And then, well, that sounds like, oh, okay, that could be perfect. So, you know, don't talk about it, but if you can push fully supported in some way, or support, or, right. you know, resources. Yeah. 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 Don't mention that my name, of course. Yeah. Use it. Use it. But, but, but the thing is, every. So, so you're playing with exceptions there at Microsoft as a beam that doesn't respond as a black hole mm -hmm. in which you have issues, you know, and it's like, well, the next version may fix it, may not, who knows. No, no one ever, no one ever submits a bug to Microsoft and expects it to get fixed. I mean, you know, it's a little slow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But, but, so, so it, it's kind of like this responsive, supported. Uh, you know, faster moving, so uh, these are the kind yes. of ideas that... Uh, so, uh, so this is you get your bug fix in your office suite. Well, you yeah. don't want to talk about bugs. Yeah. You don't want to talk about... So you want to talk about support. Well, yeah. so, right, yeah. so, right. Yeah. Okay. 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 One thing we can do, right, and, and, and speaking about that, is that if we do uh, try to identify or look at what we can provide that they either can't or aren't providing, we can start to change that dialogue. And we have yeah. it in some ways. I mean, this is why uh, you know Microsoft Office has really a support cadet. Uh, yeah, you exactly. know people look and they say, oh, you know, Office is, Microsoft Office is still being a dominant player. So they, they're supporting open document format. I see that as a huge win. Like regardless of what we do from this point forward, like that's a huge win. So on my balance sheet, like we've been doing a lot of basic things. It's maybe difficult for people who aren't as cognizant as them on. So that's the type of success we can build. And if we say one should have and then list the feature or advertise it, and that's something that we're, again, if we're being taken seriously on the market, um, is something that then you have to have a discussion point. Right, so. Can, can we not say that we're second? Can we, can we not find a way of saying we're just as good? Because the, one of the fears that we can't let go of Microsoft Office is because the alternative must be a lesser product. Yeah. It won't yeah. do exactly. Yeah. So this is the signature two poker hands. The signature two poker hands. One happens to have the, the icons of suits that are writer and calc and impress. The other has the icons that are the Word and Excel and PowerPoint. So it's kind of you've got to know what you're looking at. But you know the guy playing the the, the Libra Office cards. You see, I play regular. I've got a piece in my hand.
in which uh, people actually support you because they want to be a community, they want to be helpful, versus Microsoft Office where you have to search in, in forums which are, you know, like set up by different people, there's no central point of acceptance. So I think but the community thing plays on the support support uh, by community, yes. by a huge wider community of active helpers. This point, yeah. you know, like not only the, it's got all the features you need and all the help you might want. So like this, this yes. Mark, you want to say? Well, I, I just wanted to say I think we we've, we've gotten to the point where we're even though we're not servicing the, the same amount of users, but I think we've gotten to the point where we're no longer following, we're actually leading. And so Microsoft is the one trying to keep up with us. So, so in, in my view, what we should be really pushing is the, the fact that we are now leading and Microsoft is following. And, uh, and I agree uh, as far as uh, getting the message that uh, we offer support. But uh, for, for a regular user and, and a company, I think pushing the idea that a community is often a support to be a little scary. But on the other hand, if we pass the message on that the support is coming from LibreOffice, that's good. And, and I'm sure we can mention a bit of, of the community being part of the support. Uh, but put, using our brand, Liberal office as offering the support. I mean, behind the scenes, sure, we are having the community giving the support and the other tools, yeah, uh, site and everything. Um, but um, I think we're beyond the point where we need to mention Microsoft. I mean, they're, they're, they are following us now. They see the, the writings on the wall. They know what's happening. They know that Liberal office has been at their heels. And now, I don't think we need to bite that hard at their, their heels. We're, we're now leading them. They've had to, to offer ODF support. ODF is now being picked up by countries, not just little associations, but I mean, countries are now adopting. And so they know, they know that, that Liberal Office is slowly being adopted. So sure, their 365 is trying to wrap people around. Uh, but I, I think we should lead by, um, they're following us and we're now, like, we're, in, we're now the innovative group in the office. I'm going to ask you, I'm sorry, it's good time is running. Uh, still asking for your input, uh, action items, action items. So, just, just so that, you know, this, these are mine, so, uh, you know, we're going to add more to this. Um, testing Redmine for internal marketing communication. Sorry, this is not a marketing strategy, but I had to talk, tell you about this. It's on your to-do list. Yeah. Right. That is on my to-do No, it's fine. This is on my to-do list. Yeah. Here's the thing. Uh, the design team has done justice, and they just decided to effectively drop the, the mailing list and go completely over to Redmine. So I will write this, of course. Uh, but the idea would be to test it for a month, just like they've done. See how we work, how we feel about this, and then uh, move on. Yes, Sophie? Yeah, uh, uh, with the design team was completely moved to Redmine uh, Wiki forum and uh, tickets. Okay. Uh, social media. Um, does anybody have any questions or things on social media? So I'm sure this is yeah, well, that was actually what I was, was going to ask about. So, one of, this is a sort of a tough piece because there are a lot of people out there that are very happy and experienced users of LibreOffice and other tools, but they have problems with a lot of the existing social media out there. Yeah. So, I play this interesting game where, you know, I, the vast bulk of everything, sorry, um, uh, happening in social media is on silos, proprietary silos of information. Right. So it's like, I, this, this is a, a difficult situation. I don't want people to be forced to use social media. I was going to a conference recently, and half of the information was a freedom source software conference. Yeah. I'll let you guess what the name it was. Uh, but, um, and, and basically, but half of the information was available on Facebook. I'm like, 
this is really difficult if to, to, to get a lot of, of people that we supporters in if we migrate a certain portion of course, our message, especially if we don't duplicate it then on project platforms. So, so, so this the, is, I mean, I don't yeah, have an answer for this. But. Yeah, so I have an answer for that. Yeah, I'm sorry if it may seem a little bit, it's not brutal, but one thing. We do not, and I mean, if we have done this, and I'm sorry, I will be corrected because this will not be acceptable. We do not lock the information onto your social media. That is not something we're interested in doing. And if, as you said, I, I know, I know. I, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm I don't know what we have. I'm just saying, it's yeah. easy to. It's very easy to. You know, you send a tweet. Or you, yeah, you know, I'm going to be seeing a weird trend now. Which is that we have, you know, groups uh, contacting us from somewhere in Asia that we need to participate in this, and they're asking a very nice message, and then they said, "You can check our website," and then website is a Facebook page. I was like, "You gotta be kidding me!" You know, and this is this is a, this is like the second time it happens. It happens from two different regions in the world, yeah. and I find this uh, very troublesome and comes to concern. Yeah. So we're not doing this. However. What we're doing, uh, we were mentioning the Twitter and the Google Plus community as being very lively communities. Yeah. Yes, they happen to be very lively communities, and yes, you happen to be uh, prompted to log into the service that we, aka the Doctor Foundation, do not control. Yeah. I realize this is not a diaspora, yeah. but the same people who are not following Twitter, they're not going to follow uh, a diaspora either. Um, so I think it's, it's, it's essentially a problem that is as simple and as inextricable as people who will tell you and who will tell you in the 20s that they were not going to listen to that crap on the radio. Uh, I'm not saying there are retarded people who refuse the progress. All I'm saying is that some of these things happen to be on the social media. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. We just have to be extremely careful about not losing factual information that could be on the wiki, that could be on the website, that could be on a mailing list for that matter. Probably they will miss everything. They will get a text message. Yeah. Uh, they will not get the entire conversation. Yeah, yeah. But you know, it's 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 it's, nice. it's fine otherwise. Yeah. Uh, short collateral on TDF. Sorry, I was typing on like really like a note taking thing. Um, short collateral on TDF, yes, not a leave office. Uh, this is a to-do list for you and me and the design team. Short, one, two page maximum thing explaining yeah. what TDF is. Banners and online materials, so cool, we discussed about that. So, yes, anything? Yes, yes, it, it, it was the campaign to get the facts uh, back in 2006, 2008. Uh, but John McCreese, I think he was one of the leading uh, guys on yeah. that. And, and the good thing was that it, uh, it it made use of the fact that no no get legal it was get legal it, it made use of the fact that uh, there was a, 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 a campaign for legal office whatever yeah. so it, it, it made use of something that was in the media and maybe there is something else from the competitors that we can hook up whatever but. Yeah. I think I think you're making a very good point. Man. You you find it back. It's it's because we we, we answered, but we, had, we created something. I wouldn't say a bit crazy, but we created something um, that was really a conversation, not just with the audience, but with Microsoft. Uh, and we just said, hey, you know what? Get me one. So that so it doesn't happen at every corner, nor does it no kidding happen every month. But, 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 but sometimes, yeah. When I look to the conversation in the last half hour, I, I heard, well, a bunch of nice ideas, good remarks that we can look over and that we can use now or in half a year or within a year uh, to do maybe a campaign or yeah. whatever. Because I think there's some really yeah. useful yeah. stuff going on here. Definitely. It's good. Anybody else has an action item? Yes, there. Well, there are two. Two. I mean, exactly. We, we need to get more proactive with booth kits. With booth kits. Um, because, um, yes. like, for example, if we're going to talk about our region, like uh, the, the American side, I think that we should have like booth kits 
So whenever you go to conference, yeah. you don't need to ask for it. You have it. Like there, it's there. You're ready to go to a conference and you have a banner. It's, it's, it's good. So he, didn't, didn't the board decide on something here, Robinson? Robinson is your Robinson is your uh, <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah.